Okay, so thanks for the opportunity to present. Um, the, first, uh, the first work in the use of isoniazid monotherapy for the prevention of active TB was done in the 1950s um, by George Comstock in the Bethel region of Alaska, where he showed that, uh, in a trial, showed that 12 months of isoniazid preventive treatment, shown abbreviated here as INH, provided significant and lasting protection against, preventive, uh, against incident TB. And if we fast forward 60 years to Botswana, where HIV is now driving the TB epidemic, uh, and a trial conducted there showed that uh, although six months of isoniazid was uh, protective, 36 months uh, provided longer lasting protection against incident TB. There have been a number of other trials, and I'm highlighting two of those here from South Africa, the uh, large Tabella trial among gold miners showed that there was no benefit of nine months of isoniazid after nine months, meaning it provided benefit um, while it was being taken, but that the, the uh, benefit rapidly waned thereafter. And then a trial done in South Africa by PHRU and Johns Hopkins showing that um, lifelong or continuous isoniazid preventive treatment provided um, sustained benefit in terms of prevention of incident TB. So uh, guidelines are now starting to, to reflect this. In 2015, South Africa released uh, the, their new guidelines for IPT duration in HIV-infected adults, recommending 36 months uh, in those who are TST positive based on some of the results from the Botswana study showing that TST positive adults stood to benefit the greatest from these longer uh, regimens. So the objective of this study was to assess the long-term durability of a six-month IPT regimen, which was a standard regimen at the time, for prevention of TB in an observational cohort of HIV-infected adults in South Africa. That is the PHRU wellness cohort. This cohort was established in 2003 at two sites shown here in the red dots on the map. One was in Soweto, which was an urban township the other is in Tinswalo Hospital in Mpumalanga, which is a rural area. Participants received a standard package of care, including TB screening, cotrimoxazole, CD4 count monitoring, treatment of HIV-related illnesses, and what was the standard at the time, six months of isoniazid. This was given to tuberculin skin test positive individuals in Soweto, and the, irrespective of tuberculin skin test status in, in the rural site. HEART became available for this cohort as of 2004 in Soweto and 2005 in Tinswalo at a CD4 uh, count threshold of 200. Uh, this cohort enrolled adults who were over 18 years of age. Uh, study visits occurred approximately biannually, but participants could make uh, intervening visits as needed. And the enrollment and follow-up of this cohort closed in 2010. The primary exposure was six months of isoniazid. It was offered to those without a history of TB. We considered an isoniazid exposure from the receipt of the first dose, and we included in our primary analysis participants who received any length of IPT. Uh, we treated the start of IPT as time varying, so you could contribute time to IPT unexposed and exposed once you started treatment. In addition, we looked at clinical and demographic characteristics that were measured at the study visits, uh, we treated heart exposure as type varying and considered age and CD4 count from the baseline visit. The primary outcome was incident TB. This is diagnosed based on clinical findings, bacteriologic testing, or a report of the start of TB treatment. Uh, we considered all TB diagnoses that were made at the, clinic co at the cohort clinic and those made outside. We excluded from the analysis those with a history of TB or TB that was diagnosed within the first 60 days of enrollment as those individuals were not eligible to receive IPT. In analysis, we used Kaplan-Meier survival curves to estimate TB-free survival. We calculated uh, accrued incidence rates, and we used multivariate Poisson reg uh, regression. We constructed a model for the overall time period and then for each separate models for each one-year interval of follow-up time. 
So for the cohort from March 2003 to May 2010, there were 4,559 HIV-infected adults who had at least two collect data collection visits. From them, we excluded 229 who never had a CD4 count, and an additional 865 who had prior TB or TB diagnosed within 60 days of enrollment. And that left 3,465 participants, of whom 776, or 22%, uh, initiated IPT at some point during follow-up. <clears throat> In terms of the cohort, it was a majority female. Three quarters of them were enrolled at the urban site in Soweto. CD4 count uh, on average was 300, and only 7% were on heart uh, at enrollment. We followed these participants for 9,906 person years, which is a median of 2.3 person years per participant. <clears throat> there were 2,111 person years on IPT. Among the 776 <clears throat> participants who uh, initiated IPT, 52% completed six months of treatment, an additional 8% uh, completed at least five months of treatment. 58% of those were uh, tuberculin skin test positive, 29% negative, and 12% unknown. In terms of those uh, who used both IPT and ART, uh, those, were, those were in the minority of those taking IPT. And of those who took both IPT and, and heart, the majority started IPT first, and then subsequently started on heart, the median time um, starting hard after IPT was 1.2 years. There were 372 incident cases of TB diagnosed over follow-up for an incident rate of 3.8 cases per 100 person years. When we look at this based on IPT exposure, we see that there is a significant uh, protection from incident TB in the IPT exposed group, and this uh, sustained in the cumulative probability of TB-free survival for about one and a half to two years, and after that, we see that the curves converge. And in, a, in, a, in our Poisson regression model that was adjusted for sex, site, age, CD4, and heart, we saw a 23% reduction during the entire study period uh, for IPT in terms of uh, reduction in TB incidence. Now, when we looked at the year following receipt of IPT that is inclusive of six months of treatment, we saw a 40% reduction in TB incidence. But when we looked at the year following that, that effect disappeared and indeed uh, remained uh, diminished for the remainder of the follow-up time. This is just a graphical display showing the incidence rate ratios with a 40% reduction in TB incidence in the first year, followed by a uh, diminished effect in the years following that. In sensitivity analyses, we looked at the length of IPT, so we restricted to those completing six months of IPT, and we saw um, an 80% reduction in TB in the first year, but we still saw that diminished uh, protection following that. In terms of TST, we saw that the duration of IPT protection was similar for those who were tuberculin skin test positive or negative, it lasted, again, about a year, although we weren't powered to, to look in, in depth at that subgroup. So in conclusion, we found that six months of IPT provides significant protection for TB for up to one year in a high burden setting among HIV-infected adults. This effect was independent of heart use. And sensitivity analyses, we saw similar protection for those who are TST positive and negative and these data further support the need for extended IPT regimens in high burden settings. Thank you. I'd like to thank the participants, the clinicians and staff, and our funders.